corrosion, water damage, and lightning strikes. And also issues with, man with manufacturing and maintenance. And more than the technical challenges, which are usually sim not simple, but you can identify the challenge, <coughs> the solution, implement it, and then just move forward. There are also other ch challenges, such as organization and social challenges. And these are a bit more difficult to tackle because they, are, they have some fine details that it's not easy when to, to, to know at first hand. So in order to avoid that, we need to use some assessment methodologies before we implement a small interline project. And also to, as, as I said, Duenas used to use small wind turbines and now Duenas does not do that anymore. So there's a great deal of knowledge that now has no, no, no further use. And in order to, to avoid that waste, I have, together with John and other colleagues, I, we have written an article that lists a number of key success factors for small wind turbine projects. And this is what I'll be presenting in this video. So, corrosion. This is the really cost of the And as you can see, this is just beach, wind turbine, beach, wind turbine, salt, ocean spray, heat, a lot of corrosion. On the turbine body like this. And also even on, on turbines protected with the uh, with epoxy paint. Here you see the welding joints with corrosion. And this is how the, the turbine looks at the beginning. So even there, if we use the normal metal, we clean it, and then we treat it with epoxy, corrosion will still attack the turbine. Now this can be solved with carbonization or with stainless steel plates, but that's difficult because... This is Nicaragua, this is the Caribbean coast. There's no road to get there. It's only by boat or by plane. And this is Managua here, where the nearest galvanization plant is. So there is a solution for corrosion, but we couldn't use it. <coughs> also, corrosion on guy wires. Here, this is a fairly simple solution. We just used properly stainless steel, and, or in this case, galvanized guy wires to solve the problem. And the, the thing is that this costs some, some money. And not only money, for when you live on the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua, you need to import this from the other part of the country. And that costs money and uh, also, corrosion in the magnets. These are the usual uh, new magnets, but without this epoxy and, and so on. Cover. And these are the ones with the epoxy protection. But still, you get this problem. So if there's, they, they, they start, they, yeah, they're putting the rotors with the with chips, and then they chip away. Or if there's an instance of scrubbing between the rotor and the stator, then this protection goes away. And they corrode, they expand, and they cause the the turbine to fail. <coughs> also, what the damage? Tail bank. At the beginning, it used to be plywood. Yeah, obviously, plywood, tropical rain, it doesn't work. So, we changed to uh, marine grade plywood. It still didn't work. <coughs> and then finally, to fiberglass. And this, this works. Now, the thing is, this is a bit more expensive. But still, for the lifetime of the, of the system, it compensates to use plywood. Yeah. Also the blades. The blades used to be at the beginning of uh, mahogany wood. And as you can see here in the, in the trailing edge, with the rain and with time they started to be eaten up and so they have to be repaired. We tried using fiberglass but we couldn't really master the techniques and so we stick with the uh, <coughs> And a solution with fiber is to laminate the blades out of the pieces of 2 by 4 and then just epoxy on it. Two thick layers of epoxy. And after that we didn't have so many issues. And the blade assembly. So I see here some um, plywood blade assembly. In Nicaragua this would maybe take a couple of months until it failed and the blade would fly out of the, of the hub. Because in there the plywood, a bit of water comes into the, your wood, it gets, starts to fray, fail it. It was the same thing with this, which is solid wood. Because of the pressure here on the washers and with the, with the nuts, you would have uh, small perforations in the wood, then water would come in, bugs would come in, and you would have a failure. Also here on the other side of the hub. And all these problems that I presented, they're more or less solvable. Yeah, okay, the wood from the hub doesn't work, stainless steel, fair What about 
about lightning strikes. Nicaragua is here. And see, at least you have the rest half of the year you have thunderstorms. And what is bound to happen is that the turbine put in one of these regions will get hit by a lightning strike. And what we saw is that more or less every year the system will get hit by a lightning strike. <laughs> and when a lightning strike hits the system, you can see the, the value of the damage. It's not so cheap, and especially if you have a system on a community that lives, that where most people live under one dollar a day, then this is more money that they can generate in two, three years. So it doesn't really work. So we tried solving this. And we did a couple of studies, and we found a couple of solutions. But then again, we come to cost reasons. So the grounding system, using copper, copper rods, 130 USD. Lightning arresters, $90, it's OK, feasible. Then the ground net, using even more copper on the, on the, on the soil, 344 And then using utility grade lightning arresters, $300. So you have here already $750 just to protect your, your turret from lightning strikes, which is not optimal. Manufacturing maintenance. <coughs> One of the issues in, in Nicaragua is consistency. So we're making this on a small workshop. There are a lot of international volunteers. There are also local workers, and there will be a, a high rotation between all of these. And so some of the procedures to manufacture the wind turbines they will be implemented, but only in the head of someone. And then in the future, in, when the next person will come to do it, they will have forgotten it, then the same mistakes will be repeated over and over again. Another issue, availability of materials. As I said, the Peruvian coast of Nicaragua is isolated. And Nicaragua is also a country in the middle of nowhere, so it's not so easy to get certain materials, like the epoxy or the magnets or stainless steel. So this kind of issue related with the um, supply chain would pile up, pile up, pile up in terms of money and time and would be a frequent challenge. But maintenance, stator, current status, you know this. Too much current or a resin that doesn't dissipate heat properly, failure. We solve that, we use a different resin, we use some talcum powder to help dissipate heat, we solve the problem. That's good. Highway is the same thing, we found a solution for the problem. Blades, also. But what happens then? This. Your costs skyrocket. And so in Nicaragua, including everything, just material costs, and including import duties, we have a total price of 200, of almost $2,500 for just a winter ride. And that taking into account that you have all the materials in your back backyard. Because if you had to buy all the materials to, to build this winter ride, the piping, sheets of metal, and so on. This value would raise to 3,500 to 4,000. And so that's a very high initial cost, <coughs> which with the problems of maintenance, in the long term, it's, it's, it makes the system basically unviable, especially when compared to solar. Also, as I said, logistics. And then there are these the, the, what people call soft. Oh, one minute. Oh, just um, <laughs> soft uh, organization and social challenges. All the small inter inter small wind turbine knowledge, knowledge transfer. Most people on the three because of Nicaragua know nothing about small wind turbines, so we had to teach them, and that was critical. Maintenance funds, as I said, communities of Peruvian coast of Nicaragua, people live with less than one dollar per day. So how come are they going to raise per year? Five hundred or seven hundred dollars to fix their inverters if you get hit by lightning strike. But participation on maintenance. This is very important. If people don't feel that they're part of the system and they don't participate in the maintenance and they don't know how to do it, the system is going to fail and it's going to stay there until someone comes from the outside. If the people from the community know how to do the maintenance, then they will do it. And this comes down to the interest on the system. If you have an economic interest on your system, Alias, if you generate money from that, then you do maintenance and, and generate money for maintenance. In order to assess if all, if all of these conditions are present, and before doing implementing a wind turbine project, you should do a market assessment like the one that John did in, uh, in Nicaragua. He went there, he watched, see, saw if there were universities that taught the technology, if there were suppliers providing the parts. It can be seen as a very superficial uh, study, but in the end, it uh, compensates. 
because you know if it's a suitable reality to implement small wind or not. And also participatory diagnostics. This is basically going to the community and ask, hey, you, what do, what, what do you need for your life? What are you missing? And we came out to the conclusion that people on the community was in Nicaragua, they didn't want electricity. They wanted water and sanitation. <laughs> and so what happened in the end is that Home Energy changed the scheme to, to water and sanitation. That's what they do now. So, now the main thing. He's a satisfied. Every requirement. Good wind, at least 4 meters per second. No lightning strikes. Uh, little corrosion. Two, consistent manufacturing. Follow procedure. Follow it, follow it, follow it. Third, effective knowledge, knowledge transfer. Teach your end user how to use the system and how to repair it. And fourth, you need to find a community that's really interested in having the, the terminal. If, it's, if the community is not interested, forget it.